Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to continue solving problems about cones. Um, as usual, I suggest you to go to unizor.com uh, uh, to notes for this lecture. This is the second problems lecture uh, in the topic called cones. And uh, try to solve these problems yourself. They are absolutely not difficult at all. And uh, it will definitely be much more useful for you if you will do it yourself. Now, even if you will not succeed, and there are answers which you can check your uh, results uh, with just to, to make sure you're right. Uh, even if you are not succeeding, it's still very useful just to think about these problems, about how you would like them to approach, etc. So then I will present my solutions and uh, after I finish the lecture I would suggest you to repeat this process just by yourself again, try to solve them using whatever information you have learned from the lecture. Alright, so let's solve the problems. Problem number one. Okay, um, this is a problem from my childhood, to tell you the truth. Um, uh, uh, when I was learning uh, solid geometry, it was presented in one of the textbooks, I don't even remember where and how. So here is the problem. Um, a little girl got sick and doctor prescribed her liquid medicine and uh, he said to take from 15 to 20 gram of this liquid medicine at a time, whatever number of times a day. Now, mom has this conical glass. which holds 20 gram exactly of the liquid. Um, so she poured it completely to the brim with the medicine, but the girl said, well, I don't like the taste of it. Um, I don't want to drink it, etc. So mom said, you know what? You're sick, you have to take medicine, but let's make a compromise. You can leave half the height of this glass. So just drink half of it. Half means half by height. And well, little girl agreed. Now the question is, how much of the medicine this girl really took if she left half of it by height? Well, let's just think about it. It's really very simple. If you have a cone, this is the radius and this is half the height. Obviously, this radius is half as well as this height is half of the height. <coughs> so, this little cone, which is the liquid, which contains the liquid which is left, has half the radius and half the height, but if you remember, the volume is this one, right? One third of the area of the uh, base of this cone times height. Now, R is half. Now, square would be one quarter. H is also half. So it would be one eighth as a result, right? because this is twice as small and this is twice as small. This is square, so it will be one-eighth of the initial volume. So if initial volume was 20, then this little thing would be 20 divided by 8, which is uh, 2.5, which means whatever is left is 20 minus 2.5, which is 17.5, right in the middle of this prescription. So we are okay, and the girl will feel much better after she took only half the dosage. And mom was absolutely right uh, to, to go for this compromise. Next. Okay, next. Um, if you have a cone, and as we did many times, if we cut it along um, one of the generatrix and roll it out, we will have a sector. Now, this sector
this sector will have the radius equal to length of the generatrix, which is L. And L, by the way, is square root of h square plus r square by Pythagorean theorem, right? And the arc would be equal in length to a circumference, which is 2 pi r. Now the problem. If you have taken initially this sector and it's not this angle, it's 180 degree sector of the radius, let's say, r. Let's not use this r here. <coughs> and roll it into a cone. So the question is, what would be the volume of this cone? Well, let's just think about it. I'll use different letters now. If this is lowercase r, lowercase h, now this radius of this uh, rolled out cone would be equal to square root of h square plus r square, right? So we know that. Now, what else do we know? We know that the circumference is equal to the arc length, right? Which means that 2 pi lowercase r, which is circumference, equals to half of this, which is 2 pi r divided by Two, which is pi r. So we have two equations with two variables, lowercase h and r, and we can obviously solve this, find it, and then using the formula for the volume of the cone, get the volume, right? So how to solve it? It's very simply. Uh, this obviously is reducible by pi, so lowercase r is half of the uppercase r. Now we are substituting into this, so we have already found lowercase r, right? Now now h. Uh, if you will substitute r here, you will, and let's, uh, let's square both of them. So it's r squared is equal to h squared plus lowercase r squared, which is r squared divided by 4. So h squared is equal to 3 quarters of r squared and h is equal to r square root of 3 divided by 2. So we have h. We have h and we have r. So the volume is equal to 1 third pi r square h equals to 1 third pi uh, r square which is r square by 4 and h is r square root of 3 by 2 equals 2 pi r cube square root of 3 divided by 24 so that's the volume of the cone which is made of this half a circle of the radius capital R. Okay, next. Next is... Okay, now imagine you have a cylinder inside a cone. Here is how it will look. So this is my cone. Cylinder has a base which is standing on the base of the cylinder inside. So it would be something like this. And it goes up. That's my cylinder inside. Now what's uh, known about 
this. Now obviously the axis of the cylinder and cone coincide. Now we know the radiuses. Radius of the uh, cylinder is lowercase r. Radius of the cone is capital R. And I know the height of the cone, h. So my problem is to find the volume of the cylinder. All right, that's actually a very easy thing. Consider these two triangles. Well, let's say we have a plane which goes through the main axis. Now, what would be in the section of this plane? Well, obviously, you will have uh, this from the cone, right? And this from the cylinder on the plane. That's what will be, right? So this is the apex. Now when the plane cuts it, that would be a diameter of both of them actually. This is a diameter of a cylinder base and this is a diameter of the cone base. And I know basically everything. This is R, this is capital R, this is H. So all I need right now is to know the height of the uh, cylinder. right? If I know this H, I will know the radius and the height, so I will know the volume. Now, here it's a very simple thing because you have obviously similarity of this small triangle and the bigger triangle. <coughs> now, in the small triangle, one catheter is H and another catheter is capital R minus lowercase r. So this piece r minus r. So the ratio between these catheter is equal to the ratio between these catheter, which is h and r. Now that's sufficient to find h and then the volume, right? So that's the plan. h equals to h r minus r divided by r, right? From this proportion. And the volume is equal to pi lowercase r squared times h, which is h r minus r divided by r. That's the volume. Yes. Next. <coughs> okay. For instance, you have we did it actually many times, but not in this particular context. So you have a cone, radius r and uh, height h. Now, you cut it along the generatrix and roll it out. So you'll get a sector. So my question is, what would be this angle? let's say in radians. Okay, let's think about what this sector actually represents. Well, what I know is the radius of the circle this sector is a part of, right? This is the uh, generatrix, which is L equals to square root of R square plus H square. This is L. Now, what is the arc? The arc length is the circumference. The, this is 2 pi r. So I know about this sector, the radius of the uh, circle it's part of, and I know the arc length. Well, obviously I can find out the angle, because the angle is proportional to uh, the arc length, right? The full angle, 360 degree, which is 2 pi radians, has 2 pi L lengths of the whole circumference, right? Full angle, so it's the whole circumference. So it's 2 pi square root of R square plus H square. Now my angle phi in radians, this is radians and this is radians, is measured by this arc, or arc is measured by angle. So if arc is this, then the angle is this. If arc is this, 
the angle I can find out, right? So what would be the angle? Well, 2 pi obviously goes out, and 2 pi r goes here. So phi is equal to 2 pi r divided by square root of r square plus h square. That's the answer. So whenever I have a cone, I have characteristics of this cone, radius and uh, altitude, uh, 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 the height, altitude. Then I can find out the angle which is the result of my rolling out this cone on a flat surface. This would be the angle in radians. Okay. <coughs> and the last problem. You have a cylinder and inscribed into this cylinder there are two cones. One cone has exactly the same base as the cylinder and the apex coincides with the center of the upper uh, base of the cylinder. So this is the cone I'm talking about. Another cone, exactly the same as this one, by the way, has the base on the top and it goes down, apex is here on the bottom. And this is the intersection. So the intersection between these cones is a geometrical object which is kind of inside of both cones. And what is this? Well, it's actually, if you think about it, if you have these two cones, like uh, uh, pushing, I don't know, <laughs> inserted into each other, I don't know how to say it, they're kind of inserted into each other with their heads, with their apices. Uh, so it's a cone which is on the top, and then you have a cone which is on the bottom. That's what probably would be. So this kind of complex geometric object is actually a combination of two cones because obviously if you cut the whole thing in the middle you will have this particular uh, section which is boundary between these two two cones. So what I have to do is, um, well I don't know if I, did I state the problem? This, the problem is what's the volume of this common part of the intersection between these two cones? Uh, relative to the volume of the whole cylinder. So, let's just evaluate uh, one half of this figure, which is one cone, and that's very easy because it's right in the middle, which means it's, it, it has half the, uh, the diameter, which means half the radius, uh, and it has half the height, right? So, if my initial parameters of the cylinder are let's say r and h. So the volume is uh, pi r square times h, right? Now what would be the volume of this cone? Well the volume of this cone would be half the radius and half the so it's one-third times pi r divided by two half uh, square and h divided by two times, right? That's volume of this lower cone. And same thing with the upper cone. So combined that would be times two. So that would be the uh, the result. This is the volume of the common part which is equal to well volume of the initial cylinder V divided by by how much? This is four and this is 2, uh, which is 8 times 324, and this is 2. So it's 1 twelfth, right? Am I right? So it's 1 one twelfth of the cylinder. 
or I don't know if, uh, if you want which part of the uh, each cone it would be it, it, it's obviously one third of that so it would be one fourth so relative to the cylinder it will be one twelfth relative to the cone one of these two cones it will be one fourth because I will not have this one third right so that's the answer that's it um, I do suggest you to go to the notes on unizor.com for this lecture and try to solve all these problems yourself accurately on, on the paper and check against the answers uh, which are presented on the, uh, on the notes for this lecture. Well, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.